Brought to you by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. To get you ready for BYU and Arizona State, here's your host, Jason Shepard. Good evening, BYU basketball fans. Happy Thanksgiving. Hopefully you are as uncomfortably full as I am at this point. And quite frankly, at this hour, there's a real chance you're in a food coma and uh, are kind of hearing me coming in and out of falling asleep. But that's okay. Welcome into Cougar Pregame Live. It is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Tonight, the BYU Cougars are in Las Vegas to face the Arizona State Sun Devils in the Vegas Showdown. The Cougars, hot start to the year so far, heading into tonight's matchup 4-0 and with the Sun Devils. BYU last played on Saturday when they manhandled Morgan State 93-50. to That's early in the season, so the sample size is obviously small. But BYU has played well. They're getting contributions from all over the team, led by Jackson Robinson with 15 points per game. Robinson led the Cougars in scoring last Saturday in that win over Morgan State. He finished with 19. Now, one area where BYU has done a great job is their assist-to-turnover ratio. The Cougars lead the Big 12 and are third in the nation in that category with 92 assists and 39 turnovers. So through four games, that means BYU is averaging 23 assists and just 7.8 turnovers per contest. That will win you a lot of basketball games. I don't care what league you play in. If you have that type of assist-to-turnover ratio, you're in really, really good shape. That's something we certainly hope continues for this BYU team. Let's focus in on Arizona State. They come in at 2-1 and one after a come-from-behind victory over UMass on Saturday. Sun Devils right now averaging about 63 points per game, shooting 37% from the floor, 29% as a team from three. Kamari Lands is the leading scorer for ASU, the sophomore right now averaging just uh, under 12 points per game. What makes this matchup even more intriguing is that while tonight's game is a non-conference matchup, beginning next year this will be a conference game once ASU, Arizona, Colorado, and then some other school join the Big 12 Conference. For more on tonight's Thanksgiving matchup, Greg Rubel able to get a conversation with new assistant coach Colin Terry, and Greg asked him about this new challenge coming from the pro ranks. It's been a really fun transition going from the pros uh, into college. Um, There's little intricacies that are definitely different, kind of different rules, different game, but I've always had a passion for the college game as well. And so uh, when this opportunity came up, I was really excited about the possibility of joining Coach Pope and his staff and, and, you know, working for BYU. So it's been a dream situation for me, and I've learned a lot since I've been here. And it's just been really, really fun to, to work and interact with the staff and players on a regular basis. You were in the collegiate game locally at Salt Lake Community College back in the day, and then you made the shift into the pros with the G League uh, teams. Maybe you could uh, detail the stops you've made and how that first transition went from from college to pro. Yeah, so I was at Salt Lake Community College, and when I was there, the timing was kind of perfect because Salt Lake Community College had just won the national championship. I came in the year after, but that was also the first year the Utah Jazz moved their G League team from Idaho into Salt Lake Community College. So it was really a special situation because I could be around the Division I coaches and and coach at the junior college level, but also be around the NBA on a daily basis. And because of that, that was a bridge that really helped me to get into the G League. Um, I would start scouting, helping friends, things of that nature, and then that transitioned to an opportunity to to coach in the G League, and so I was, uh, you know, helped scout and did some coaching with the Northern Arizona Suns, the Suns G League affiliate. That led to the Boston Celtics uh, G League team, uh, the Maine Celtics, and then the past two seasons I've been with the Charlotte Hornets uh, NBA G League, and it's been an incredibly amazing experience. Just being around some of the top coaches. Uh, top players just you know trying to be a sponge and and learn as much as you possibly can what about your growing up background yeah so I went to Skyline High School Um, I went to Skyline my dad and uncle both played quarterback at BYU 
Uh, so I have a lot of ties uh, to BYU and played actually when I was a sophomore uh, on the basketball team, I played a good amount of varsity and Brandon Doman was a senior. And so he's got a lot of ties to BYU. So um, grew up here, even in the off season with, with when I was coaching in the pros, would spend a couple, two to three months here, would always kind of home base here. So just so excited and grateful to be back full time. So having spent numerous consecutive G League seasons, what inspired you to make the move to BYU? How did you hear about it? And then maybe the uh, the process that led to you getting this job? So I was at Summer League, um, and I was an assistant coach for the Hornets uh, NBA Summer League team in Vegas, which was an incredible experience. And while I was down there, I actually met with the Denver Nuggets uh, about being an assistant coach for their G League team. And one of my friends kind of heard that there was an opening here at BYU. And, you know, I've gotten to know Coach Pope a little bit over the years, just being in the basketball world. And uh, I would come down here and just kind of talk hoops and watch practice and was just so impressed with the way he does everything and the staff and and all this other stuff. And so Long and the short of it is, is I just, you know, started reaching out and, you know, we, we ended up creating a dialogue and then went through the interview process and was lucky enough to, to get the opportunity. So, um, yeah, it's it's been a real, it's been a whirlwind, but it's been a great experience for sure. And adding to the whirlwind nature of things, the offer was extended days before you and the team took off for Europe. Yeah, I mean... Normally, my timing isn't really great, but on this one, it really worked out because um, I got the job and it was like two or three days later, uh, I'm going on the team trip to Italy and Croatia, which was the coolest trip I've ever been on. I'd never been to Europe before. I mean, basketball had taken me to China to do some some coaching over there, but I'd never been to Europe. So to be able to go over there with the team and play games and be a part of it in a small way was just unreal awesome experience you're about three months into your tenure now BYU so much has happened because you came in in the off season, got a trip immediately this time to get ready for the season and it's been such a great start to this season a lot has happened in a hundred days or so it has been a whirlwind but I've I've loved every second of it and just being here I, it's already made me a, a better coach um, just again seeing you know Coach Feger, Coach, you know, Fennell, Coach Robinson, and then, you know, Coach Pope and how he does everything. That was one thing that was super attractive to me coming here was, uh, you know, Coach played in the NBA and, you know, a very NBA type program. And so I thought the transition would be uh, pretty seamless. And so it's it's been great and, and just, you know, try to – help out as much as I can. Okay. How about analytics? How big was that in the G League, and how much do you bring to uh, to the BYU staff that way? Analytics in the NBA is, is a big thing with the NBA team and also the G League team. I've been involved in the analytics space. Um, I think we have as much or, you know, as any analytics, as, as any, you know, NBA team out there. We're very numbers-driven and mm-hmm. – and I think that gives us a competitive advantage because we are so focused on that. And, and Keegan, that's kind of um, what he runs, and, and he does a f- fantastic job. So, um, yeah, so it's it's been a really great thing to be a part of that aspect as well um, and everything else here. What have you liked most about the way this season has started for BYU? I picked one thing I really noticed when we played over in Europe is how how unselfish we are. Like we are the guys on our team um, are constantly looking to make a play for another player, and that's pretty special. That you know that's something at times, whether it's at the pro level or the college level, can be difficult to cultivate and also to hold on to if that makes sense. So I just think our ability to make the extra pass, make a play for the teammate, I think has just been really, really awesome. And I think it's just fueled this this great start to the season. 
All right. Coach Terry, great speaking with you. We'll do it again. Good luck against Arizona State and this weekend here in Vegas. Awesome. Thanks for having me. All right, that was new assistant coach Colin Terry and Greg Rubel. Appreciate uh, both taking a few minutes to get that interview for us today. You know, it does reemphasize the fact that when the coaching ranks, it it is such a small fraternity. I mean, you heard him tell the story that coming to BYU was not on the radar. He was actually looking at interviewing for the Denver Nuggets G League affiliate as an assistant coach. And then, you know, somebody hears that BYU may be looking for someone and somebody tells somebody and eventually, you know, a guy that grew up here in Salt Lake and went to Skyline and coached at Salt Lake Community College, you know, has an opportunity to come back to BYU. It's just kind of funny how some things like that happen. And it's certainly not unique to the coaching ranks. Uh, that that happens in all different uh, industries and, and businesses. But, you know, with, with being such a, a niche, um, you know, business to begin with and not a whole lot of people have the opportunity to get into this it's it's kind of fun to hear some of the stories on how people end up where they are and i know that uh, byu certainly happy to have coach terry in the fold here with byu basketball all right coming up next we're going to head down to las vegas our courtside conversation with mark durant that's coming your way next as cougar pregame live continues on the new skin byu sports network Here's Jason Shepard with more Mountain America Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Mountain America is the official credit union of BYU Athletics. I hope you have enjoyed your Thanksgiving, spending it with family and loved ones. And now as we uh, we get a little bit later on in the evening, get to some BYU basketball for you. BYU taking on... Arizona State tonight. They'll be down in Las Vegas at the Vegas Showdown. And joining us from Las Vegas, you know him, you love him. He probably had one heck of a Thanksgiving down in Vegas. His name is Mark Durant. Hello, Mark. Oh, hello, Jason. Happy Thanksgiving. And, and yes, I have had quite a day, quite a day. I actually was up in St. George, played a round of golf, mm-hmm. and then had th- uh, the most amazing Thanksgiving dinner with the, the wonderful Larson family, Russ Larson and his family. And we drove down here. And so this has the potential, Jason, the potential to be one of the all-time great days of my life. Now, one thing wow. left has to happen. One thing left has to happen. Okay. You know what that is. Let's get, a, let's get a W tonight here for the Cougars. Yeah, I, I, like, what, oh, uh, my, I like what you're my putting Packers up. My Packers won. My Packers won. Just saying, let's throw that in there. Add to the mix. Okay. All right. I like that. I like the way that you're thinking. I like the positivity. But I do want to ask you a Thanksgiving-related question. Because everybody kind of has their own favorite part of the Thanksgiving meal. If you can only eat one part of the traditional Thanksgiving meal, so we're talking you can only have the turkey or you can have the mashed potatoes or the stuffing, which one are you picking? Basically what I'm getting to is what is your favorite of those? Well, I mean, that's not a question. Obviously, clearly the answer is mashed potatoes. I mean, mashed potatoes, I, that, that's 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 the, the, the solid, that, that's the heart of any Thanksgiving meal. I, you know what, though? I, I never liked sweet potatoes, but my wife makes this sweet potato casserole that is just amazing. And who, who would have thought I would ever like that? But that that's pretty darn good, too. But mashed potatoes is like uh, the Jim or Fredette of a Thanksgiving meal. Okay, I like that. I like it. You know what? And people that don't necessarily understand, when you say the Jimmer, they understand how great Jimmer is, and then they understand the fact that that means you love mashed potatoes. <laughs> so I see what you did there. You talk yeah. about two things people love. And it makes it easier for them to understand what you're talking about. It's hard to get anything by you, and that's why I'm a great color commentator, because I can make those kind of connections. Just bring it to life for the fans. Yes, exactly. Okay, so this is always something that I'm curious about. You're, you've played this game. You've been in these situations where you go. I don't think they were called MTEs when you played, but that's what they're called now. Tournaments is essentially what they are. How do you stay focused and stay locked in in these tournaments, especially over the holidays? You have Thanksgiving that's going on right now, and we all we know everything that is involved in that with family, and you know there's there's just a little bit more going on off the court right now. How do you stay locked in when you have games to play at this time of year? Well, it is it is difficult, but I mean your life when you're playing college basketball game holidays. Are, 
can kind of take a back seat. Uh, and uh, every once in a while, maybe you get a couple of days off around Christmas, which is a real luxury. But your job is to play basketball. I used to love these types of tournaments because you know, I always felt like we, we were at our most dangerous early in the season because we were highly disciplined. You know, played well together, and and teams, kind of the bigger name teams might not think that you can play with them or are not quite gelled together, so they're vulnerable. We always had some great success. I'm actually looking across the court at Kevin Nixon, speaking of uh, preseason success. I remember going over to Maui, and he went, won a couple of game winners in that tournament. And anyway, uh, it, it, it's it's a great opportunity. I always saw it as a great opportunity because most of the, you know, if you go to a nice place, a lot of teams want to go there, the best teams, so you're playing against great competition. For instance, uh, one time we played against Duke against Bobby Hurley, and uh, he'll be coaching the Arizona Sun Devils, State, uh, Arizona State Sun Devils tonight. So it all comes full circle. But I, I used to love it, but it's about business. I mean, hopefully you get a nice meal, but you're there to, to win basketball games, and rarely do you have such a great opportunity aside from the you know, NCAA tournament to, to win games against really good basketball teams. I talked about BYU's assist-to-turnover ratio in the first segment. And, and just for those that, that may be just now tuning in, BYU right now leads the Big 12, and they're third in the nation in that category. They're averaging right now about 23 assists and just 7.8 turnovers per game. And, you know, I joke, you're going to win a lot of games if that continues throughout the season. We certainly hope that does. Have you noticed anything as to why this team has been so good this early in the year so far taking care of the basketball? Well, last year they, they were terrible, which was unusual for BYU. I mean, that's kind of a hallmark of BYU is maybe you don't have as much athleticism, but you play smart, take care of the basketball. And early in the season, I think Dallin was off the mission, uh, was still trying to get his feet. Rudy was, uh, you know, coming transfer. And uh, just in this building, <laughs> where they played Creighton, had a huge lead in that game and almost gave it away, turning the ball over. So it was a real problem last year, but now... You've got some experienced guys, guys that have played with each other a lot. Uh, a year older, Dallin is, is much better with the basketball now. Spencer is, is terrific. You know, he's an experienced guy. He's not going to make a lot of mistakes for you. Uh, and so I think this team just playing together uh, in Europe and uh, getting a year older together, it just makes makes a big difference. And uh, you're seeing what that can do for a team when you're unselfish, share the ball, don't turn it over. You get good looks. You get multiple looks because you're crashing the offensive boards. And it's fun. It's fun basketball when you play that way. It's not fun just to kind of be on an island, take uh, take it off the dribble, try and do everything yourself, and then you end up turning it over. If you're sharing, man, I, I took, got so much joy, Jason, of making a pass for my buddy to score. If you can kind of get that in your mind, that it's even better to get another guy a basket than yourself a basket. That, that, that really makes a difference. I, I see that in this team so far. A healthy Trevin Nell is such an addition to this team, and there's a lot of guys that are playing well, but I, I wanted to focus on him for a minute. He's shooting almost 50% from the field and 44% from three. What has his production meant to this team? I think it makes a, a huge difference because he adds another consistent weapon out, out on the three-point line. So let's say you've got Dallin and Trevin and Spencer uh, and uh, Noah or Jackson, I mean, these are all good three-point shooters. So makes it very difficult to game plan. They really spread the floor. It opens it up for Foose inside. It opens it up for the dribble penetration because you're so concerned about getting out on those shooters, especially Nell. And, and I think he's really, uh, not that he's changed his shot, but his shot's quicker now, and he's able to get it up uh, with defensive pressure, and, and that's helped. So... He's confident right now. He's playing well, and he adds another weapon, which really opens up the whole game for BYU. All right, let's focus in on the Sun Devils. What uh, what stands out to you about Arizona State in this matchup tonight? Well, I think they've struggled a, a little bit. Uh, that they're, they're going to be without um, seven footer tonight. Uh, I'm trying to hit Sean Phillips. You know, he's out, so th that's always. It was almost like the Creighton game last year. They didn't have their big fella. Yeah. It really opened up the inside for BYU. So that will open up the inside for BYU. Arizona State has had trouble scoring. They haven't shot the ball particularly well. They had to come back from 
down 11 with about two minutes against uh, UMass Lowell to get that victory. So I think it's a team that's vulnerable, but a team that's had good success, well coached, uh, and is probably pretty hungry to, to do what BYU wants to do here and, and get a big win in a you know, a national environment in one of these kinds of tournaments. And so they'll be coming out after BYU. And BYU's put themselves now in a position where, you know, they played so well that they, they got a little target on your back, you know, and, and teams are going to be ready and come after you because they, they know that you're a good basketball team. So uh, I, I think this Arizona State, State team is dangerous, vulnerable, and if BYU continues this type, type of play and the toughness they've shown early on, I think it's a great chance for a victory. You know, that's something that we talked about a couple of games ago in terms of the, the early national intention. And, and BYU is not, not ranked right now, but in terms of Ken Palms, they're highly, highly rated. And they're, they're starting to receive votes in both of the polls. And those types of things, I, I think for a, for a team that there were question marks in terms of you just didn't really know what what to expect this year with it coming into a new conference i think things like that this early in the year even though you know you, you've won most of your games going away you had the one really good performance against san diego state which is probably the, the best competition that you've had so far i think those early type of accolades can really help a team like byu just sort of find their place and, and maybe get a little swagger and i don't mean that in a cocky way but just start to build some of that confidence here in the non-conference. Yeah, this is a great chance for this team to really get that confidence, get that swagger. I mean, they have more than taken care of business against teams they should beat. I mean, they have. It's been such a dominating performance, but and they've avoided people saying, "Well, look at the competition by doing what they did against San Diego State, which yeah. is a win that's going to get better and better for BYU." And, and, and so you, you can't dismiss that. I mean, they've, they've done that. And, and so now this is a matter of just kind of sealing the perception and sealing your identity here in this kind of tournament against very good basketball teams. And if you can come out of here with a couple wins, you know, you're going to be in really good shape, not only with the perception nationally and top 25 rankings and all that stuff, but in your mind as a team, you're going to, you're going to think, man, we're a good team. And, and you can ha- play with a little swagger and, and not you know, not not get too confident, but but be be confident in the things you've done, which is would be very impressive if they could get two wins here. All right, Mark. Last thing, and, and you and I have not talked about the basketball side of the Pac-12 schools joining the Big 12 next season, and I figured, hey, since the Cougars are facing the Sun Devils, it seems like a good time to actually do that. What are your thoughts on the basketball side of those schools joining BYU in the Big 12 next year? I love it. I love it. You know, I, we've talked about ASU. I like the proximity in Arizona. I think had a big win today. Uh, they're always great, and uh, and Utah will will get better and is better this year and will be all, BYU all, give all, all that they can handle up at the Huntsman Center this year. Yeah, I, I just like the the regionality of it, and I think these teams were always meant to be together, and they haven't been at least for the most part. And, and I, I like to see it all coming together. Uh, good basketball in the West, and and we're all going to get a chance to see it every year. Well, the the game that is going on prior to ours is NC State and Vanderbilt. So once that game still got about twelve minutes to go. Uh, once that game is over, there's still about twenty minutes before the game can officially tip. So, um, would you want to you want to have any other conversations? We can take a little bit of time because you and you and Greg may have to meet. You may have to stall for quite a bit. I shot eight over at Sand Hollow uh, today, which was pretty good. I started out with the double, and so yeah, I played pretty good. And uh, it was actually really beautiful. I had my daughter, who you know is a tremendous golfer, yes. my wife and son, and just being out there together on Thanksgiving. It was just, it was really nice. Anyway, that's all That's all I got to say in addition to what we talked about. It's great being with family and with friends. It's been a great, great day, and now let's watch some great basketball to finish it off. Yeah, let's cap it off with the W. Mark, great stuff, man. Uh, we'll hear you coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks. All right, my brother. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you as well. Go to BigOtires.com and make an appointment at one of 50 locally owned and operated Utah locations. Big O Tires, the team you trust. We'll take a time out. We'll come back and... Check out uh, what's going on today in Top 25 College Hoops. Plus, obviously, it's Thanksgiving. We've got NFL scores to update you on throughout the day as well. We'll do that when we come back on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. With more Mountain America Cougar Pregame Live, here's Jason Shepard. 
The Cougars and Sun Devils meeting in Las Vegas on this Thanksgiving evening. Cougar pregame live, as was just mentioned, brought to you by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Let's uh, update you on today's action in top 25 college hoops. It was Texas A&M defeating Penn State earlier today, 89-77. to Villanova upsets number 14 North Carolina in overtime by 2, 83 281. Number 19, Florida Atlantic defeating Butler 91 to 86. During the interview with Mark, he mentioned Arizona getting the win today. They certainly did. The third ranked Wildcats knock off number 21 to Michigan State 74 to 68. Colorado State takes down number 8 Creighton 69 48. That game was not close. Another upset Memphis over number 20 Arkansas 84 to 79. And number 23 USC gets the win over Seton Hall 71 to 63. All right, there is one college football game going on right now. Well, it's actually a final now. Ole Miss defeating Mississippi State by 10 17 7 is the final score in the NFL everything is now a final the late game the 49ers have defeated the Seattle Seahawks in Seattle 31 to 13 the day got started in Detroit and it got started with the Packers offense coming out firing they got up big they would hold on for a seven point win 29 22 Packers defeating the Lions in Detroit and then your afternoon game the Cowboys with a big win at home over the Commanders 45 10 is your final score one last thing tomorrow night one seed BYU women's soccer faces North Carolina at Southfield in the Elite Eight as a reminder the Tar Heels actually ended the Cougar season last year in North Carolina on their home field and now BYU has a chance to get a little payback with the exact same scenario you can watch the game 6 p.m. Mountain Time tomorrow on ESPN Plus right coming up next we're going to get you down to Las Vegas the Cougar pregame coaches show with Greg Rubel coming your way next you're listening to BYU basketball on the new skin BYU Sports Network this is the Zions Bank Cougar pregame coaches show on the new skin BYU Sports Network Zions Bank. For 150 years of helping you succeed, Zions Bank is for you. Let's take you courtside and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening, Cougar basketball fans. Happy Thanksgiving and welcome courtside inside Michelob Ultra Arena at the Mandalay Bay Resort Complex in Las Vegas, Nevada for the opening night of the Vegas Showdown. This four-team four-game Thanksgiving weekend event featuring BYU versus Arizona State in the day one nightcap in the early game. In fact, it's just uh, at the under eight-minute media timeout right now. So they're uh, uh, 7.57 to play, and it's NC State with a 64-52 lead over Vanderbilt. NC State, uh, the favored team in this one, the higher metrics team, and the uh, Wolfpack have a lead of a dozen with under eight minutes to play. The winners will meet in tomorrow night's championship game. The losers from day one will play in the third place game tomorrow. My name is Greg Rubel. I'll have your play-by-play call tonight, joined on the headset by the beloved former BYU Ironman. He's, of course, Mark Durant. And uh, Mark, after four games and four wins over mid-major and small conference teams, including one really, really good team in San Diego State, BYU tonight faces its first Big Six conference member, the Arizona State Sun Devils, out of the Pac-12. ASU 2-1 and one on the season, but uh, they needed a furious late comeback to beat UMass Lowell the other night. Not UMass, but UMass Lowell the other night in Tempe. Now, on paper, uh, BYU the much better and much deeper team in this one. We'll see tonight if the Cougs can continue their winning ways during this very solid start to the season. So Greg, I had a delicious Thanksgiving meal today. I started with some uh, asparagus that uh, my son's girlfriend Emily Kunzler made. Delicious, it was delicious. Was there uh, was there was there butter involved? Uh, butter, uh, tomatoes, like Greek Greekish. Okay. Uh, olive oil. It was fantastic. Mm. It was a great start. And, and then uh, I had a roll that was fantastic. Uh, and, and then I had some mashed potatoes, a real solid mashed. Oh, t- delicious! My wife makes the best mashed potatoes. So we're starting this me- this Thanksgiving season meal. For BYU, you've had a couple tasty little side dishes. You had kind of one nice substantive meal that you could sink your teeth into. And San now, Diego State. San Diego State. Yep. And now you're getting to the turkey. You're getting to the, the big the big time stuff. And and BYU has a chance here to 
to like wrestle wrestle our tonight with him. He he smoked his turkey. I got a chance to smoke the turkey today in, in this <laughs> tournament and get some real good stuff <laughs> happening for you here. You want to continue this meal, so when it's March, you're having coconut cream pie in, in, in the NCAA tournament. So that was a belabored analogy, but the point being, obviously, BYU's done the right things, and they're off to a great start, but you don't want to mess it up now. This is the real opportunity. This is the heart of the meal. Get it done here tonight, and then you really set yourself up for good things in the future. Well, I thought I was plenty full after the family meal earlier, but suddenly I'm hungry again. Uh, we, we'll go out later. You and I love the late nights in Vegas. Oh, we, we, uh, we shut it down. Uh, my pregame conversation with BYU head coach Mark Pope. It's coming up next as the Zions Bank Cougar pregame coaches show continues live from Las Vegas on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's time to hear from BYU head coach Mark Pope as we return to the Zions Bank Cougar pregame coaches show. Here's Greg Rubel. We've got BYU and Arizona State coming up on the first night of the Vegas showdown. NC State and Vanderbilt. NC State 71. Vanderbilt 58 with 5 minutes 40 seconds to go. So NC State almost into tomorrow night's championship game. Some work to be done. But a double-digit lead late in this one. BYU and ASU, by the way, last met 14 years ago in Provo. BYU won that one, led by Tyler Hawes and Jackson Embry's 17 points apiece. Jimmer for that year one. Well, that was a Jimmer year. What did Jimmer do? Uh, Jimmer had 10 points, one of 13 shooting from the field. He, a rare off night for the Jimmer. He went uh, eight for eight from the free throw line and uh, made one field goal and was a uh, was a part of the supporting cast for Tyler and Jackson on that night. Uh, their last meeting, by the way, BYU and ASU on a neutral floor, which this is, came 15 years ago in Glendale, Arizona. I was in Las Vegas. I was in Las oh, Vegas for a football for a bowl game. Don't bring this one up. You and Russ Larson were down at the toaster, calling that game BYU and ASU. And uh, ASU wins at 76-75 as the refs wave off a last-second bucket by Charles Abua that should have counted on a night that James Harden, yes, James Harden, scored 30 to pace the Sun Devils. Well, speaking of free throws, Harden got about 30 free throws. That's how he got his <laughs> points. It was like a every, every time down was a trip to the line for that guy. I think something's never changed. And Charles hits the most amazing shot at the buzzer. They count it, go to the monitor for like five seconds, wave it off. Shouldn't have waved. I mean, it was that's one of the dark days of Cougar basketball. That should have been a Cougar win. Should have, could have. BYU comes into tonight's game on a nine-game non-conference win streak. The streak began in this building almost one year ago. The Cougs beat Creighton in a thriller as Dallin Hall had the late game winner. Time now for my pregame conversation with BYU head coach Mark Pope, presented by Zions Bank. For 150 years, Zions Bank has been serving the communities where you live, work, and play. For financial experience you can count on for the next 150 years, Zions Bank is for you. Tonight, I asked Coach Pope about the particular challenges posed by an ASU team that's not shooting it great, but as they showed the other night against UMass Lowell, they're finding other ways to win games. Yeah, there's certainly a team that's capable offensively to cause a lot of havoc, but right now they're relying on their length, which is incredible, um, and their mobility, um, and and they're just counting on slowing teams down. They're one of the highest turnover teams in the country, forcing turnovers. Uh, they're also holding uh, guys to a really uh, low field goal percentage, and so they're a little bit of a bully defense, and you have to find a way to get past their first line and then really stay on attack, and so hopefully we'll be able to do that tonight. Can they be a potentially frustrating team to play? No doubt, um, and that's what they do. There is for sure going to be some frustration in the game. That's built into every game, and that's what they do best. But um, we just have to be next play, next play, next play, next play all night long. Stay on our toes, stay off of our heels, and, and uh, keep coming at them. They're missing a 7-foot, 6-6 six and six guy, 6.6 six rebounds guy in the post, and Sean Phillips, he's hurt. Yeah, it's interesting because it, it makes them less deep, but it makes them more mobile, um, which is almost uh, in some ways can make them more dangerous. Um, it, I think it makes them more uh, impactful in the press. I think their ball screen coverage is mostly kind of quick shows and really aggressive two to the ball, except for their five man who they play in a drop a lot. Um, so I expect them to be pressed up the boards much, much more than they have been and and um, uh, aggressive, and they're still incredibly long. So uh, it'll be a, a little 
little change, but they're still an incredibly capable team. The core three they bring back, though, one, five, and eight, Collins, Neal, and Gaffney, pretty good core for Coach Hurley. Yeah, um, really good players, and, and uh, you know, Perez is, is proven to be a real problem for people getting to the free throw line. The West Virginia transfer. Yeah, um, and he's a, you know, he's a vet vet. He's, he's played a billion minutes um, in a bunch of different programs, and, and he, you know, he has a little bit of an old man's game feel where he just kind of, he just tricks you over and over and over again. So he's, he's actually been a real stabilizing force for that group in terms of, like, when they get stuck, they're like, you know what, let's throw it to him in the mid post and let him go to work. And, um, so those four guys are formidable, uh, you know, formidable crew. Your shooting numbers are drawing a lot of attention, but uh, your rebounding numbers have to make you as happy as anything right now, I would think. Yep, and that's important. Um, they have to go hand in hand. You know, if you're going to be an aggressive shooting team, you have to be great on the offensive glass. And so that's what we're building our team around, and, and, and that's a huge focus for us, and we'll continue to do that. Okay, personnel-wise, you've gone with the same starting five for your first four games. We may see a change tonight. Yeah, uh, we'll start dialing at a point. Um, you know, Trey's done an incredible job, uh, unbelievable job um, in terms of results. Uh, he's grown so much and is playing great basketball. So um, he's going to be a, a huge part of, of how we proceed in this game and tomorrow night and every night. But uh, we're trying to uh, get a few more minutes out of Dallin as he gets more and more healthy. Was Dallin just a matter of time, and has he gone according to plan in terms of maybe this was the plan to ease him in and get him in by about this time? Yeah, we didn't know for sure how he was going to respond um, you know, to, to health issues. But he's been kind of been able to go through it with no setbacks. And so we're really pleased with his progress. Meantime, your leading scorer is coming off the bench in Jackson Robinson. So. Yep. Uh, leading scorer, leading shots guy, almost leading minutes guy. Um, he's been fantastic. And he, he, um, he you know, his, his um, role is going to even grow more now um, with the change uh, in point guard. And so um, you know, he's got a huge load for us, and he understands it, and he's really good at it. And so we're going to need him to be great tonight. Ali Khalifa has missed a couple of games. Where is he standing right now? Yeah, still still a little ways on Ali, uh, still a little ways on Dawson, but hopefully we'll get them back relatively soon. Okay, you're on a nine-game non-conference win streak that began in this building almost a year ago. Big win against Creighton. Remember that one? Yeah, it was a, it was a special game for us. We were coming in here, uh, you know, having stumbled a couple times, and it was a huge game for us, and Creighton was playing great basketball, and our guys rose up and were unbelievable. It was, uh, thank you, it was um it was, uh, you know, Richie Saunders had a great night. Uh, um, you know, Dallin Hall had an unbelievable mm-hmm. game winner to kind of save us. Uh, uh, we had a bunch of guys stuff up and play great. Good vibes in this gym, and hopefully they'll continue. With a home-heavy non-conference schedule, how big to get games like this away from your building? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's much different. I mean, the energy in this gym is going to be much different than what we felt in our first four games. Um, and so it's something we need to be accustomed to. We need to be able to come out and perform. But I have a lot of faith in our guys. Our guys are great at manufacturing energy. Um, they're great at communicating with each other. They're great at showing up uh, every night to go to work. And so that's what we need to do tonight. And a quick word about the field on the other side, NC State and Vanderbilt tomorrow. Yeah, two great teams. A um, ton of respect for both those programs. And, and um, so, you know, hopefully, hopefully we get a win tonight and get, to get the winner tomorrow. Okay, Coach, thank you for the time. We'll talk to you post game. Thanks, G. That's Mark Pope leading us into tonight's Keys to the Game, brought to you by your local Ford stores. BYU basketball is built Ford proud. Mark Durant gives us his keys to tonight's contest, BYU and Arizona State. ASU's going to bring pressure, try to turn you over. They did to UMass Lowell what Creighton almost did to BYU in this building last year, late in the game, <laughs> that turned was that around, wild. and they wanted uh, a last-second shot here. But Gaffney and Collins, uh, they're going to pressure you. So I think turnovers under 13, and then, they're going to have to rely more on the three-point shooting. Now, they haven't been a good three-point shooting team, but they'll have to rely on more with that with the big fella out. So I think you keep it under you know, 33%. They're 29% on the year. They're not going to have enough firepower to beat you if they're, if they're shooting that poorly from the three-point line. All right, those are Mark Durant's keys to the game. As we go to break, we remind you to go to BigOtires.com and make an appointment at one of 50 locally owned and operated Utah locations. Big O Tires, the team you trust. The BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show coming up next live from Michelob Ultra Arena at Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the Cougar Tip-Off Show brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. The Cougar Tip-Off Show is also brought to you by the BYU Creamery, the classic taste of BYU ice cream, now also in a convenient pint. Also brought to you by Siegfried and Jensen, helping Utah families for over 30 years. Let's head live to the all-pro capital courtside seats 
Alongside Mark Durant, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening once again, Cougar Nation. Happy Thanksgiving once again. And welcome back courtside inside Michelob Ultra Arena at the Mandalay Bay Resort Complex in Las Vegas. Game one of the Cougars' two-game trip to Vegas. NC State and Vanderbilt playing the opening game of the Vegas Showdown. And uh, Vanderbilt hanging around. NC State work to be done. 74-64. Wolfpack lead the Commodores with 4.04 to play in this one. So... Vanderbilt uh, not going away quite yet, and they're at the free-throw line. Technical free-throws as we come back in, so this could be an interesting finish indeed. NC State's led most of the way, but Vanderbilt is uh, posing a challenge in the closing four minutes. So the winner of Vanderbilt-NC State gets the winner of BYU and Arizona State tomorrow night. BYU comes into the game this evening, 4-0, ranked in the top 15 in Ken Palm, and getting votes in the AP Top 25. The Sun Devils are 2-1 and one right now. This is the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show, brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere, Greg Rubel and Mark Durant, with you for play-by-play and commentary. Our studio host is Jason Shepard, back from the islands. Coordinating producer is Terry South. Control board operators are James Finlayson and Derek Dungan. Our BYU Radio editor tonight is Maya Tippetts. Our BYU Radio engineer, Barry Squires. You're tuned in on the new skin, BYU Sports Network, led by our satellite radio flagship, BYU Radio, Sirius XM 143, and our over-the-air flagship, KSL News Radio, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. We're also on the BYU Radio app and at byuradio.org. Lots of ways to tune us in and sync us up. Tonight's game is on ESPN2 on the TV side of things. Well... Among four wins this season for BYU are three games against some of the lesser lights in the college hoops world, and the big win over San Diego State continues to hold up. The Aztecs have played great since losing to BYU. Meantime, in the other games BYU was supposed to win, the Cougars' mark haven't only won. They've won big by 47, 57, and, 50, and 44 points. BYU's been dismantling these teams and doing it on both ends of the floor. A lot of times you kind of take care, take for granted these types of teams, but it seems like more than ever those types of teams are winning games early in the in the season this year. You've seen a lot of upsets, and so it's always dangerous to play those teams and not only just win, but the, like you said, they dismantle teams. They have absolutely dominated and destroyed teams, and they, they're really not showing a lot of weaknesses. Their shooting numbers are good. Their assist to turnovers is incredible. The bench scoring. Even though they're shooting a lot of threes, Foose is still getting his. He put on a dunk exhibition the other night against Morgan State. You weren't there. Uh, I, I, the, the team is so well-balanced, playing so together right now. They're playing with a certain toughness about them, a little swagger. And so I'm excited to see them play against a little better competition. But the fact is, the competition they've been given, they far exceeded what a normal team would do against those teams. They're not, they're not terrible basketball teams, and BYU's made them look very, very bad. And we still have to remember that uh, BYU has done what it's been doing without being at full strength. Ali Khalifa has missed the last two games. will miss another one tonight, apparently. Uh, Dawson Baker hasn't played a game yet for BYU. And Marcus Adams likely won't play this year. It would be unusual if he were to get cleared at this point by the NCAA. So this deep BYU team could get even deeper, Mark. (laughs) Yeah, that's an interesting problem for Coach Pope to have because do you have enough minutes? But I know... Coming in, the way Dawson Baker was playing, they were super high on him. I mean, he could be a real difference maker out on the floor. Coach Pope's talked about uh, Ali Khalifa, you know, uh, being a guy that can extend the floor from the five and is an amazing distributor of the basketball. So these these are great things you plug in that you thought BYU would need this year, right? You thought, well, from last year's team, we need something, right? Uh, But so far, they don't really need them. But how nice will it be when they get them? Coming up after this break, we'll hear from the Arizona State side with special advisor to the head coach, Bobby Hurley. His name is Greg Lansing. As the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show continues, live from the Vegas Showdown at Michelob Ultra Arena in Las Vegas on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show. Let's head back courtside and rejoin Greg Rubel. Welcome back to the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show. We're getting you set for BYU and Arizona State from the Vegas Showdown. Tonight's winner, BYU and ASU, will meet the survivor of NC State and Vanderbilt. NC State 76, Vanderbilt 68. So it's an eight-point lead with one minute and 45 seconds to play in the first of two games tonight here at the Michelob Ultra Arena in Las Vegas. Tomorrow night's championship game will be at 8 p.m. Mountain Time 
Uh, the two losers play in the third place game set for 6 p.m. Mountain Time. So we say 6 and 8, closer to 6 and 8.30 when you uh, account for the delay between the first and second games. But either way, winners and losers meet tomorrow. Then the Cougs are off for a week until next Friday's game versus Fresno State in Salt Lake City. Arizona State lost nine transfers off of last year's roster. But they kept three key players who will all start for head coach Bobby Hurley tonight, including the player who's currently second nationally in steals per game. His name is Frankie Collins. He's the point guard for ASU. Hurley also uh, was about to start an LSU transfer and a West Virginia transfer. The LSU transfer, Sean Phillips Jr., out tonight. And he's a seven foot, 245-pound player in the post. So down a big body are the Sun Devils tonight. Uh, the Sun Devils only play really uh, three other players' major minutes. Not a very deep team right now. A short time ago, I visited with Coach Hurley's special advisor, Greg Lansing, a former head coach at Indiana State and assistant coach at Iowa. Most recently served as an NBA scout with the 76ers before joining this ASU program. And a short time ago, here in Vegas, I asked Coach Lansing about the roster turnover and early season transition in Tempe. Well, it's awfully important, you know, that with uh, having some older guys and guys that have been through the wars with Coach Hurley, but you're still combining a lot of newness coming in there. we got an older guy with Jose Perez, and we got some freshmen. So across the board, it's a, it's a lot of guys trying to uh, find out where they fit, you know, in our lineup, and uh, we're far from a finished product right now. Last game, Sean Phillips, your seven-foot postman, goes out. So you're down a body right now. Yeah, we're down about it. We've, we've dealt with a lot of little things and rarely had our full team for practice, so that's that's hurt us too. But, yeah, we're, we're going to need Sean against Treor tonight, and we're not going to have him, so we're going to have to find a way to guard those interior guys. How do you describe the way you pulled the last one out of the fire against UMass Lowell? As my dad used to say, we we, we uh, found victory. We took it out of the jaws of defeat. Um, we were terrible for 38 minutes. We weren't good at all, and and uh, just got going and and uh, pretty shocking to come from behind in a game where you really had no business winning it for at least 38 minutes. You weren't making a lot of shots, and then suddenly defense turns into offense, and you were like a different team, like you said, in those final two minutes. Yeah, the, the press really got us going, and we're a much better shooting team than what we've what we've shown. We're going to need to make some threes tonight against probably the best shooting th- three-pointing team I've seen in a long time. Yeah, I was going to say, what do you make of this BYU team that's off to a 4-0 start? Oh, I mean, he, he, he does a great job, obviously. I don't know him well, but I've known his teams and followed his teams. They are just they're poetry in motion to watch on offense. They're really Im- impressive what they do, the way they share the ball. They're all a threat. They can all shoot, but they work at it. They run. They screen for each other. They look for each other. And uh, there isn't usually a guy on the floor that you don't have to guard. And right now in college basketball, they may be kind of that rare team where you you put on last year's film and then put on this year's film, you're seeing a lot of the same guys. Yeah, I I know. You know, when you're looking at Nell last year, uh, out, what a great addition. But uh, just a very impressive team, and and they're playing hard. And, um, you know, we have a common opponent in San Diego State, and that's a very physical, tough team to beat. And they went in there and, and took care of them. Is, is, that, is that the game you kind of look to to see where BYU's ceiling might be? That San Diego State game. Yeah, and I think Coach Pope would think that, you know, say they didn't play great that game, but they played really hard. Uh, they played really physical. Obviously, their other opponents aren't near uh, the caliber of San Diego State or, or BYU, but that is a game uh, that you look at because um, of, of the way San Diego State plays, you're going to have to grind out a win. And, gosh, you know, it was a tight game till about the last couple minutes, and then they pulled away from them. What are you hoping to get out of your non-con this year? Oh, we just got to get better. You know, I, I think with all the new guys, you know, you, you look ahead and you're watching a lot of college games across the board. But uh, like I said, we're far from a fin- finished product, and we got to be a better practice team. We got to get guys healthy, and we got to start putting it out on the floor. You get a Big 12 transfer in uh, Jose Perez, and I say Big 12. Soon it's all going to be Big 12 for BYU and ASU. <laughs> yeah. uh, what does Jose Perez bring to your team? Well, he, he took about a month yeah, off, so when we got him, he stepped right in. You know, like I said, he's a 25-year-old uh, six-year guy, so he's just an awfully talented. He, he's not in tremendous shape yet. He's still working his way back into that, but he can facilitate offense. Um, from the perimeter or in the post as good as about anyone as, as I've seen and he's a great leader plays really hard really tough brings a great deal of experience to us you say he's 25 yeah so he's almost as old as Spencer yeah, Johnson I, I was kidding he fit, he fit right in with some BYU players 
And and how about this whole Big 12 transition, the fact that this will be a conference game moving forward, BYU and ASU? Yeah, I look forward to it because I know how great of a home court advantage uh, the Marriott Center is. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of newness next year. But I remember last year uh, when I was scouting for the Sixers, I'm looking at the Big 12 saying, when can you when can you say we're going to win that game? Yeah. You can't say no, that at all. And then all the guys that you've added, obviously BYU's a great opponent, us and Arizona coming in there. It's just it's scary to think about it. If you don't mind a personal thing about you, your career uh, in the college game for so long, uh, a venture into the I NBA, now back to the college game, what made that move right for you, and are you happy to be back with the with the collegiate players? You know, when my contract wasn't extended at Indiana State, we moved, uh, we moved to Scottsdale, and I took a year off. And I just went and I watched a lot of practices, obviously, Arizona State and a lot of games. Uh, really, really enjoyed scouting last year for it, but I've been at so many Arizona State practices and know the staff well, and something came open up, and it's a great position because it's just one of the coaching positions, so I don't have to deal with a lot of other stuff. I'm on the floor coaching, and I'm just loving it. And then finally, uh, how big a weekend is this Vegas two-game set for you guys? It is. You know, it's it's a championship. You get a chance to win. You know, you talk about usually during the season there's three championships you can win. One of the tournaments, then your postseason tournament, and then obviously the NCAA tournament. And I could think Coach told our guys over 70% of the NCAA champions won a, won a season, t- an, an MTE during the year. So it obviously can propel you to great things. All right. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. Thanks again. It's a pleasure, and we'll see you down the road. All right, that is Arizona State special advisor to the head coach, Bobby Hurley. His name hey, is Greg Lansing. Greg? Yes, sir. Come to think of it, I'd like a new title. <laughs> special. You want, to, you want to be a special advisor? A special advisor to the play-by-play to play Greg, broadcaster? Greg Rubel. <laughs> Let's make that happen, all right? I want a little name tag glued or taped to, to my seat next time. Right now, his placard here at the table just says, Mark Durant, BYU Sports Network. That's way special too Special advisor. Yeah. Okay, uh, folks, if you've had any cars on the injured reserve list, Doug Smith Kia has some promising new prospects on their lot in American Fork. To see the full scouting report, visit DougSmithKia.com. The first game still going on. The last few minutes are taking forever to play. 30 seconds to play in an eight point game. NC State 80 and Vanderbilt 72. Wolfpack looking to finish it out. Spinning out a free throw as we take this break. It's an eight-point lead with 30 seconds to go. Before we go to break, it's like memory lane for me tonight. I'm I'm watching Jerry Stackhouse, Coach Vanderbilt. I played against him at North Carolina. Bobby Hurley played against Dukey out out in Maui. So uh, maybe I do need to be special advisor (laughs) because these these guys I played against are are fancy (laughs) coaches. You have been around a while in the game, though. And so, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, that's a great point. You've got two coaches in this event that were guys you played against at BYU. Yep. Vanderbilt and NC State, by the way, we're in the final 15 seconds of a nine-point game there. One time, we're playing Bobby Hurley and Jared Miller, the toughest, meanest guy uh, of all time at BYU, just leveled Bobby Hurley. I've never heard such colorful language from Mike Krzyzewski in my life. He was so furious that Jared Miller was going to injure his star point guard, and probably rightly so. He probably never heard such colorful language till we set up beside Bobby Knight in <laughs> Oakland that one night. Man, a guy coming from Provo, his ears are we're used to those two coaches, but they, they got the job done, no question. 11.4 seconds to play, NC State 81, Vanderbilt 75. They just banged a three a moment ago, so a six-point game, more free throws, and that should about do it. Three-possession game now with 11.4 to go. By the time we come back from this break, this first game will be over, and the BYU Cougars will be warming up for their game against Arizona State. The BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show rolls on after this, live from Las Vegas on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show. Let's rejoin Greg Rubel. All right, uh, we are back at uh, Michelob Ultra Arena in Las Vegas. 84-78, to 78, NC State has finished off Vanderbilt. And then after the game, both teams remained on the floor a little longer than normal past the handshake line for an exchange of words and glances and long looks. And finally, both teams are leaving the floor. But there was a little bit of testiness at the end of this one. But uh, indeed, NC State moves into the championship game of the Vegas showdown. So NC State awaits the winner of BYU and Arizona State. And that game is now officially 19 minutes and 34 seconds from getting underway. 
So the first game is concluded. Now we can begin the countdown to game number two. Greg Rubel and Mark Durant with you courtside here at Michelob Ultra Arena in Las Vegas. It is the first night of the two-night Vegas showdown. BYU and ASU meeting for the 45th time all-time. Next season, this will be a Big 12 conference game. Well, Mark, uh, the season's still very young, but uh, I'm not sure if anyone expected BYU to be a top 15 Ken Tom team, which they are. Uh, getting AP top 25 poll votes. They're 27th if you count the votes this week. And and uh, they're running every opponent out of the gym right now, not named San Diego State. But here we are. And I tweeted out the stats in the last few days. But BYU's returned one of the most continuous rosters in the country. And so far, the familiarity and that continuity is paying off. This is a team playing like a real team, and the bench is as good as it gets with Jackson Robinson coming off the bench. Dallin Hall had been coming off the bench. He'll start tonight. Richie Saunders, Atiki Ali Atiki coming in as reserves. Dallin gets back into the starting lineup tonight, and that's great news for BYU. The great news is that he's looked so good coming off the bench, and clearly he's done enough as a reserve to get back in the starting group for Mark Pope. A real rarity to have that much continuity uh, on a team coming back. You mentioned Arizona State with the nine transfers. That's becoming more the rule than the exception. And BYU, uh, you know, able to bring back the the majority of their scoring. You you have a guy like Dallin Hall in this building. Last year, he he made the winning shot, but he struggled early with turnovers. Uh, Now he's really taking care of the basketball, and he's got that year out back off his mission. And, and like you said before, I mean, you, you're doing this without guys you expected to plug in in Dawson Baker and Ali Khalifa. These guys are just know how to play together, know where guys are going to be, uh, can depend on each other defensively especially, are super unselfish, and uh, play with uh, kind of a toughness about them. They've been there before, uh, and uh, I don't think any situation uh, kind of makes them... Uh, uh, scared at all. They're ready to go. They're tough. And uh, I just, I, I hope they can continue that. I mean, uh, it, it's hard to sustain that kind of play, uh, but I think this team has the experience and, and the kind of character you need to do that. This will be a big game for BYU. This will kind of tell us even more, I think, than the San Diego State game. If they can really take care of business here tonight, this team really could do something this year, Greg. Hey, what turned the, uh, what turned the Morgan State game into a dunk fest for BYU? Part of it was uh, altitude for them. I mean, they came out, Morgan State came out really hard getting after it. And then the second half as the lead extended, it was just like, man, I'm tired and I can't breathe. And BYU's got 10 guys that they just run nonstop. And it was just a matter of I think they got fatigued. And so that freed up Foos, especially in transition. And everybody in transition, they dominate the fast breaks. And it was it was a dunk fest. Okay, this isn't an altitude game, of course, but... Arizona State, not deep. Right. They're, they're missing Sean Phillips now. They're going to play seven guys, maybe eight, if there's some foul trouble. And BYU can play eight, nine, ten if they need to. Uh, this could be a game that if BYU gets out and running, that Arizona State finds itself playing on the back pedal. Especially the way they like to play. They really uh, get after it uh, on the yeah. perimeter, yeah. like to turn you over. That takes a lot of energy to play that kind of defense. They're not just kind of sitting back passive. They're getting after it defensively. So if you are having to play 40 minutes of that kind of ball, that, that can wear you out as much as any altitude can do. And BYU should be able to take advantage. Of it. That's one of the great things about this team. They're, they're the top of the country in bench scoring. Uh, top of the Big 12, I think, what, sixth in the country in bench scoring. Those those rankings may have been completely made up by me. I think I, I read Greg Rubel's tweets about that or something. But the fact is, BYU scoring about 40-something points a game off the bench. That's amazing. And uh, you got talked about Jackson Robinson, how good he is coming off the bench. Dallin won't anymore, but they, there's a lot of firepower coming in off the bench for BYU. So BYU playing its first game outside of the Marriott Center tonight. Let's see how the Cougars respond. Coach Pope alluded to it in the pregame interview. This will not be the energy that BYU's been able to enjoy in games one, two, three, and 4. So it's the first game out of the building. Let's see how BYU responds to not being in the friendly confines tonight. Well, this is not the first time that most of, of BYU has seen this building. I like this building, and the what fans there are here, it's not, there's a, a nice smattering of fans, are mostly BYU fans, and so uh, I, I think this team should feel comfortable. I think this is a shooter's gym, uh, and uh, you know I'm looking at Trevin Nell knocking down threes out there. Jackson Robinson just hit a three. I, I think I think this is a place where they can feel comfortable and, and continue that success. It's going to be hard going. 
I think, say, like to the Huntsman Center uh, for your first kind of true away game, that's that's a lot to ask. But this environment, I think, it will be a nice kind of transition for BYU to go into those road games. By the way, BYU is in the home whites, of course, for games one, two, three, and four. And they're going to be trotting out. I think they wore these same uniforms in this building for the Creighton win last year. I think that's what they wore against Creighton when they got that last-minute winner from uh, Dallin Hall. And they're wearing the, the navy blue with royal and white and these are pretty sharp so they're going with the navy with royal and white tonight asu will be technically the home team and they'll be with white and maroon and gold tonight byu and asu are coming up we'll get into, it into another segment of pregame conversation after this this is the byu store cougar tip-off show live from las vegas on the new skin byu sports network The BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show rolls on. Here's Greg Grubel. All right, uh, they've set the new tip time for 10.34 Mountain Time, 9.34 here in Las Vegas. Again, they always do this. They'll say the games will be at um, 7 o'clock and 9 o'clock in Las Vegas, but it's always 7 o'clock and 9.30 because there's always more time between games than they allot. And so, yes, this is a longer pregame than normal, and now the new tip time is 10.34 Mountain Time, 12.34 in the Eastern Time Zone. So BYU and ASU will play after the bottom of the hour. Let's get you some miscellaneous notes here before we wrap up our pregame coverage, though. Uh, BYU's hit double-digit threes in four consecutive games for the first time since the Yoli, TJ, and Jake Toulson team, the COVID-shortened season team of 2019-20, that was the nation's best three-point shooting team that year. They hit six, They had six straight games at one point with ten or more threes. BYU's at four and counting, and the way they're shooting it, they got a shot, shot of making it a five straight tonight. I, I think Dallin and Trevin and Spencer are consistent th- three-point shooting. Now you got Richie shooting it better. Uh, Noel Waterman's hit a couple. Uh, even Foose has hit a couple. Uh, Trey Stewart uh, has knocked down some. So Jackson Robinson, obviously, is one other consistent guy. So if you've got five consistent 40 45% three-point shooters, man, you are it's so golden in college basketball. That's why that team was so great. They had so many great three-point shooting the team. This team is similar. They're going to have a lot of weapons on the perimeter. And so far, so good from the three-point line for the Cougs. All right, uh, the game uh, that I did not do with you, the last game BYU played, the Morgan State game, Noah Waterman ended up with 15 points, eight rebounds, a couple of blocked shots, made a couple of threes, made seven of eight free throws. If not, one, if not one, if one of, if not the best game Noah's played at BYU. If you'd have told me uh, who the enforcer for this team would be, I, I would not have picked Noah Waterman last year. If anything... Now maybe it's unfair to him, but I thought he was a little soft. I thought he could play harder. I thought he could rebound better and be a force in the paint. And he's become a different guy. He, he goes after it. I mean, he, he's, a, he's a Windex guy. He goes and cleans the backboard, and I love watching him play. Did we see and, this from him last year? We did not see anything simple. He was a three-point guy, and he had a couple nice three-point games, and, had, and he just couldn't get in a flow. But now it doesn't matter if he hits a three. It's nice when he's open and he hits it. He does so much more for this team. He, he gets multiple opportunities on the offensive side. He's tough inside. He's a great defender. And at 6'11", being able to guard perimeter guys at 6'11", that's huge. And he, I just love the way he's kind of transformed his game and is playing a different game and really helping BYU out. And, and you look at his height at, uh, at 6'11", and, and to be that kind of guy who can, who can be a threat from the three-point line, what a tough guard he is for the opposing foreman out there. That's the key. He doesn't need to shoot a lot, but he needs to be a threat, and that goes along with Foose. You, you, you can't have a guy just standing out there with a the big man dropping in. If you bring that big guy, if you're a threat to shoot it, man, that opens up the floor, and guys are able to get to the rim and have that dunk fest like we were talking the other night. But if, if you're able to, to back off a couple guys on the perimeter because you know they're not going to hurt you, that makes it very difficult offensively. Something I like about uh, Dallin Hall getting into the starting lineup for BYU tonight, this now makes it BYU starts five guys who all have career highs of 20 points or more. If you can put on five guys on the floor who are all capable of going for 20-plus, you've got something. Dallin Hall's career high, 23. Spencer Johnson, 20. Trevin Nell, 20. Noah Waterman, 22. Fusene Traore, 25. Yeah. Somebody's going to get 20, probably a couple guys. I have no idea who that is. 
and that's awesome. That's a great thing. I mean, ever since I can remember, Devin Durant was going to get it, or Mike Smith, or Russ Larson, or McKelly, or Jimmer, or Yoli. Travis Hansen, or Yoli. Yeah. I knew those guys were going to get it. I have no idea tonight. I mean, it could be uh, Dallin. It could be Jackson, Spencer, Trevin, Foos. I mean, who knows? And I love that about this team that – it, it, they have so many weapons, and it's not all about one guy uh, taking over the game. And it makes it super hard to game plan against. It, it, if you have to stop one or two guys, you can do it. But if there's five guys, what do you do? I mean, you just have to kind of play them straight up. And Foose, because of that, rarely gets doubled, so he dominates. And if you double him, then there's an open shooter. I mean, it's so hard to game plan guys when you don't know where they're going to have to get their points from. They could get it from anywhere. And, and Jackson Robinson's not one of the 20-point guys. His career high was 19, and that came in his last game, the Morgan State game. It's just a matter of, before Jackson's in the 30s. I mean, he, he can get hot and forget about it. He's, it's amazing that he's your bench guy. I mean, it's amazing to me. He, he's a really good player. Spencer Johnson in the Morgan State game career high. I'm talking about career highs here. Jackson Robinson career high at 19 points. Uh, Noah Waterman career high 8 rebounds in the Morgan State game. Then there's Spencer Johnson career high 8 assists in the weekend win over Morgan State. Well, Spencer's now kind of a player coach. He's so smart. He's seen it all. He doesn't get rattled. He doesn't hurry himself. He understands exactly where guys are supposed to be, what the play is, how to get buckets, where to give the pass, not just passing it, but get the guy the, the, the pass in the right spot. And uh, and he's also a real threat offensively. So uh, you're going to have to help if he goes to the hoop and then he just finds the guy. I mean, he just knows the game now. And he'll, he'll continue to be a great assist guy, but uh, he, he just is a complete, complete basketball player at this point in his career. Okay, blast from the past for you. And we're going to go to school with Mark Durant here a little bit. When I say the name Alan Taylor, what does oh, that man. say to you? And who was Alan Taylor? Alan Taylor was one of my all-time favorites. I grew up watching him. BYU late 70s. Just an absolute beast on the boards. One of the great centers for BYU. Love me some Alan Taylor. That group of Trumbo, Taylor, uh, uh, I mean... Ainge and Balif and all those guys. That was a great era of BYU basketball. That's where I cut my teeth on basketball and BYU sports. I hung out with those guys after the game shooting in the tunnel, and they were my friends. I couldn't believe a little six-year-old kid in Alan Taylor. He, he was the best. Why are you asking me about Alan Taylor? Exactly. Why am I bringing up Alan <laughs> Taylor? Because of this. And Alan Taylor was indeed a beast in the late 70s. Until the last week or so, Alan Taylor was BYU's career leader in field goal percentage. Wow. Okay. And now? It's Fuseni Traore. It's Fus. Now, Fus is still going, so his numbers may fluctuate a bit, but for the time being, he has now surpassed Alan Taylor <laughs> as BYU's career That's field amazing. goal percentage leader. And this is a minimum of 300 field goals made, so you have to have done some stuff. Yeah. And Fus is sitting at 60.3% from the field for his career. Alan Taylor was at 57.7%. That's pretty amazing. I, I mean, just that list that I a couple minutes ago was li- the McKellys and the Russells and the Trosts and all those guys. I Gary mean, Trost was fourth and Jerry Miller's fifth. 30-plus uh, yeah. years that that stood. Credit to Alan Taylor for one and then for Foos to do that. That's remarkable. So that's how good this guy is in, in Fuseni Traore. And, and, again, just to shine the light of appreciation on him, not to take for granted what he's doing because he's already putting himself in the company of BYU greats. Well, he's such a force down low, and I want to get more touches because he is so good, and if teams aren't going to double-team him, have we seen anybody stop Fusini Tarari with single team? No way. So you have to double. That opens things up. I think BYU a, a little bit could, could do a little bit more of that considering what a dominant player Fus is, but even when they don't look to him, he still gets his. I mean, he, he's that good. He's going to find a way to be – a real force in a game. Now, Arizona State was hoping to use Sean Phillips Jr. at seven foot two forty five to provide some opposition for Foose down low. Without him, they will turn to the combination of Alonzo Gaffney at six nine two hundred and Kamari Lands at six eight two twenty to deal with BYU's big men down low. Without Sean Phillips tonight, to Arizona State's down a big body, and uh, they already were not playing very many bodies. So, depth will be an issue, especially if the Sun Devils get into foul trouble in this game here tonight. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a challenge for them. They have not played well. They had to have a miraculous comeback against UMass Lowell. They've struggled in their games. They lost to who uh, Mississippi State, I think, in in Chicago, and um, so they're they're struggling. But 
sometimes it scares you when you lose a big guy. And it, it'll change the team. They'll be more aggressive. They'll be quicker. Uh, they'll spread the floor more. And uh, you just got to make sure you don't kind of let them find their stride in this game. Starting lineups and the opening tip for BYU and Arizona State coming up next. This has been the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.